Let's bring in our guest this morning. We have Kirby Daly, senior strategist at New Edge Group, joining us on this uh, Good Friday. Thanks for making time for us yeah, my pleasure. here, Kirby. Um, let's talk about earnings first, stop, mm -hmm. because it seems that numbers from the U.S. continue to come in better than expected, better than, and better. 86% of companies beating the street. Yep. What does it say to you about the market sentiment? Well, it, it, look, I mean, that's clearly markets are reacting to these numbers. Um, they're ignoring the macro headwinds as they have been all along. Um, you know, there have been a number of things that should have knocked the market back, didn't do it. Um, these strong earnings bolster the confidence that stocks are going to possibly continue the run. Um, I, I just think that, that this is probably a temporary sort of uh, uh, reaction to the earnings. And then there will be, once we get past the earnings season, there will be a refocus on the potential headwinds coming. And, of course, everyone expects a slowdown in uh, the second half of the year. So this is probably one of the last gasp rallies we're going to see. Mm -hmm. But, you know, looking at the numbers, you have to say it's somewhat well-deserved. Yeah, temporary reaction. Sustainability is the question. Yeah, sustainability yeah. is the question. Yeah. Temporary reaction, that's interesting because I think we've been in this sort of cyclical bull run for, what would you say? <laughs> two years now yeah and some of us haven't believed it the whole time yes. but uh, <laughs> but you know it, it, the fact remains that this has been driven we cannot lose perspective on the fact that this is all driven by fiscal and monetary stimulus which is not sustainable so while it was very difficult to predict how what the, how long the reaction uh, would mm -hmm. continue um, one thing we do know is we can't continue to the governments around the world especially in the US and China can't continue mm -hmm. to stimulate monetarily and fiscally the way they have been. So we have to expect at some point that economies will either have to go on their own on a self-sustaining recovery path. Some believe that and others don't think that's quite possible. We're not ready for that yet. Right. And then we're going to have to see markets adjust. Yeah, that's, okay. You know, it's hard to predict when you're going to run out of this caffeine, right? The stimulus, yeah. because you can't fight the Fed. That is the term that people use in the learned. markets. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> right? Um, but you're right. People aren't looking at the fundamentals because you have deficits. You know, people trying to raise the deficit ceiling to make sure that uh, the U.S. is all right. And this is all based on stimulus. You have a weak dollar. When is this going to be funneled well, into the market? No, this is a, it's a good point what you brought up. Of course, they're going to have to raise the debt ceiling yeah. uh, in the U.S. There's no question. Otherwise, it all shuts down. But there's going to be fighting along the way. Politicians will be politicians. Um, but that should not, that should not be an issue. Um, what is going to be an issue is the weak dollar. Um, clearly, the U.S. dollar strong policy is in full force. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, we're starting to see cracks. Of course, you have Obama now coming out, uh, attacking the speculators for the oil prices very strongly in the last mm -hmm. couple of days in his rhetoric right. and his, in his relaunching of his, of his uh, launching of his new campaign. Um, you know, you can't have it both ways. You have a weak dollar, you're going to have commodity price inflation. You have the Fed, you have Bernanke, and you have Yellen out there saying that, you know, commodity prices are not affected by the weak dollar. And Bernanke went so far as to say, you know, higher oil prices won't affect the U.S. economy. So you have a lot of jawboning on what comes down to natural effects from a weak dollar. Mm -hmm. They want the weak dollar to boost the U.S. economy, to boost the export competitiveness of the U.S. Mm -hmm. They want to, you know, all of the positive effects, and they want to try to talk away the negative effects. At some right. point, that's just not possible. It's so interesting to see the market dynamics right now because you have a weak dollar. You have a lot of headwinds as well, mm -hmm. considering we do, you know, we still have uh, concerns about the uh, Eurozone. Is China going to slow down? And as you mentioned, oil prices are close to, uh, what, triple digits, 120 maybe at the yeah. end of this year. Year, but yet we still see gains in the markets. I mean, when, I guess, when are we going to see the steam run out of equity markets? Look, I, a long time ago, I gave up on equity markets. So, things that are happening in the equity markets don't make any fundamental sense. What does make fundamental sense is all, the laundry list of headwinds that the global economy is facing, the laundry list of problems that we are not only not addressing on a policy level, we are exacerbating. And I'm talking about, again, China over-investing into overcapacity to stimulate their economy, the, the the imbalances, the trade imbalances, the current account imbalances, um, the, the, the currency wars that are going on, the U.S. trying as hard as it can to get the U.S. consumer back to a consumption-driven economy, instead of making the fundamental changes, instead of China making the fundamental changes in its economy to wean itself off of export dependence, everyone's trying to get back on the train mm -hmm. that got us into this mess. So, I'm, you know, you're going to be able to express the, the consequences of those views better mm -hmm. in commodities, in currencies, and in fixed income markets. Because equity markets are living in their own world, yeah. and you can make a lot of money. The best way to play the equity markets is just to keep a long position with protection uh, for the inevitable correction. But uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not into playing right. that game. It, I think that yeah. it's, it's just a market that's not reacting. Other markets are reacting, as you would expect. 
to these headwinds that you talk about and to the dynamics of the markets. But yeah. equities are, you know, they're All trading right. off these earnings. Well, one more question for you mm -hmm. since we are on this uh, Good Friday talking and yeah. people are thinking about a yuan revaluation and also yeah. interest rates. Okay, bets for interest rate hikes this weekend, and then talk to me about a yuan one-off revaluation. Well, look, there's, you know, to play the fool's game of trying to predict when and, and, and if they're going to hike the either the RRR or, or interest rates is, you know, maybe they will. I'm, I'm sorry I can't give you a prediction on that, <laughs> but I will say um, the yuan revaluation story is very interesting because I have said all along over the past few years, I don't believe China will have a one-off revaluation. Um, there were different times there were strong calls for it. I said, I don't believe it. I don't believe they will do it. Um, this time, it feels feels a little bit different. I noticed, uh, of course, the rhetoric over the weekend. I was talking about it on Monday. Mm -hmm. That was very surprising to me. Yeah. Uh, my gut says that it's possible, but then we had the comments coming out, you know, saying that, oh, it's all taken out yeah, of context. Right. Um, I think what it shows is there is no consensus in the Chinese government. There is no consensus on this very, very important policy. And I still maintain that it is in the, the best interest of China to do so to the point where it scares me that I believe it scares them to do it. And that's the big problem. They're so scared of the effects of it. Mm -hmm. that they won't do it. And that, to me, is the most important point here. Otherwise, they would just do it because right. it's clearly there are so many positives for them, both on the economic side and on the, the world diplomatic stage. Mm -hmm. But something is keeping them from doing it. But we might see a slight revaluation, but it's, it's not going to be anything earth shattering right. and certainly not a one way bet from here on, even if they do do a three to five percent revalue. All right. Kirby, thanks for joining us on this thanks, Friday. Susan. Enjoy your Easter weekend. You That's too. Kirby Daly of uh, New Edge Group.